Hello, welcome, welcome to this channel. Just um, yesterday, we concluded the 52 days journey in the book of Jeremiah. Uh, if you participated, thank you for being part of that. And if you did not participate, here is another opportunity, I mean, to journey through the year. The journey through the year continues. The, the 52 days was just, there are seven 52 days in every year. And the remainder of one day or two days depending on whether it's a leap year or um, a clear year. We had to study the book of, well, go through the book of Jeremiah within these 52, first 52 days because Jeremiah has 52 chapters and Jeremiah is also the 24th book of the Bible. And we believe that this has a word in season for 2024. So that's the reason. But we know that uh, whether 2024 or not, the book of Jeremiah is a book for all seasons. And now that we have uh, gone through the book of Jeremiah, you can still take each chapter of Jeremiah uh, for a week, at least, you know, keep reading the book. But whether you do that or not, the journey into the year continues. So this is day 53. And um, it's on my heart that we just go on, you know, and continue to share together and pray together because every day is a gate for a purpose. Time is a spiritual gate, you know, that allows purposes to find expression on earth. There is nothing that happens on earth that does not pass through a time gate. There must be a month when that happens. There must be a year when that happens. There must be a week, a day, an hour, a minute when that comes into existence. So time is a spiritual gate. And because time is a spiritual gate, it is important that they are manned just like the physical gates. If you do not have security at the physical gates, then anything can happen. Anybody can access, you know, go through the gates and, um, you know, it can be disastrous. So just as we man the physical gates, it's important that we also watch over time gates. And the way to watch over time gates is to know the purpose of each day. What is the purpose of this day? So like a watchman, when you understand the purpose of each day, then you know the days, I mean, the purposes that you are supposed to open the gate of the day for. Oh, this is what God wants to do today. So we open the gate of this day. I open my heart. I open by prayer, by declarations, by preparation, by planning. I open the gate of this day for purpose A, B, C. And because I understand the purpose of each day, I also know the purposes that are not in the plan of God for that may want to, you know, crash into that gate. And so by prayer, by, you know, thought, actions, we shut the gate of that day to such purposes. So when I know what God wants to do and know what the enemy wants to do, I know what to open the gate to. Open the gate so that God's purposes can come and as much as possible, do all you can by prayer, by word, to shut the gate against unauthorized purposes that would want access, you know, to gain access into the day. You know, our words and our prayers are powerful. You can, Jesus Talk to his how you can, you know, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. He didn't say whatever is bound in heaven is bound on earth. He said whatever you bind on earth is bind, bound in heaven. That also means that whatever you refuse access will not, you know, have access. But what you grant access will have access access especially when we are functioning in the will of god and functioning in alignment with divine purposes so today is day 53 and it's important in the plan of god to understand what is this day about it is not just enough it's not enough to just come into any day and say lord i want a b c the bible tells us that when we pray according to the will of god god hears us Zechariah 10 verse 1 says, ask the Lord for rain in the time of rain. So that means that our prayers for each day must line up. Among all the other things we pray about, we must line up, you know, get our prayers to line up with time. 
align prayers to time because we know what the season is. So we ask for rain in the time of rain and ask for wind in the time of wind. So you don't ask for rain in the time of heat and ask for heat in the time of cold. So we need to understand what is the purpose of this day. And to understand the purpose of each day, we need to go to the word of God and look at the scriptures. The God's word is light. The psalmist says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. If God's word is light, then it should show you where to plant your feet. It should help you see where you're going. God's word is light to my feet and a lamp to my, in a light to my, yeah, your word is a lamp to my, unto my feet and a light unto my path. So we have established that every season has its pattern, has its guiding light in the books or chapters or sections of the Bible that correspond to that season. So that's why we had to read the 24th book of the Bible in 2024. And so when to be able to pray into the 53rd uh, day of the year, we need to be able to locate that day in creation. Every day of the year, every day, every season has its root in creation. There is a day of creation that every day or every season expresses. So the 54th, the 53rd day of the year is a fourth season day. It's a fourth day of creation day. Why? Because the 53rd is the fourth day in the eighth week. And so we need to understand that on this day, God made the luminaries to keep darkness away. So this is a day to desire from God that darkness must not have with sway, that darkness must not overtake God's people. Darkness will not overtake my life, that overtake me. Darkness will not overtake my family. Darkness will not overtake my nation. Darkness will not overtake. Because the fourth chapters of the Bible indicate that in this season, the adversary rises. There's an adversary that rises in this season. You know, you're going to see that in Genesis chapter 4, Cain killed his brother. In Ezra chapter 4, the adversaries of Judah arose to stop the rebuilding of the temple. In 1 Samuel chapter 4, the Philistines captured the ark of God and took it away. The sons of Eli died in battle. Israel was defeated in battle. So you see that happening. In Matthew chapter 4, the tempter came against Jesus and began to tempt Jesus, hoping that darkness will overtake him. In Luke chapter 4, we have the same thing. In Mark chapter 4, we also have the storm that rose against Jesus. In Acts chapter 4, the persecution of the church began. So the adversary rises in every, you know, fourth season. That's like, you know, to, you see that the fourth day of creation was, you know, that's when God created heat. So many times people have heat in the fourth season. It was heat. So, so we locate this day in the book of, in the creation narrative. And that gives us something. Father, in the name of Jesus, we will not be hurt by the heat of this day. Father, in the name of Jesus, we will not be overtaken by darkness. As you created light on the fourth day, let there be light on my path this day. Let there be light to guide me. Let your word guide me. Let your spirit direct me. Let there be light on my way. Whatever will cause me to stumble this day, whatever will cause me to fear, whatever will bring confusion into my life, let there be light. That's why God made the luminaries to you know, organize our day, 
to divide between the day and the night so that there is no confusion. Everything is regulated. There is orderliness. You know, you don't have to stumble when the sun is shining because you are seeing. There's no darkness. There's nothing to be afraid of. So as we go into this fourth day of the eighth week, may the Lord's light, may the luminaries be there to guide you. The Word is guiding. The Holy Spirit is guiding. Um, wisdom is directing your path so that you will not walk in darkness. You will not stumble. You will not be afraid. And you will not be confused. Now, another pattern for this is that we need to go into the 53rd chapters of the Bible, in the 53rd book of the Bible. When you go to the 53rd chapter of Psalm, Psalms, the book of Psalms and Isaiah are the only books of the Bible that have up to, you know, the half 53rd chapters. So you go to Psalm chapter 53, and Psalm 53 tells us that this is a day of adversaries who say or think that God does not exist, and so they do wickedly. Psalm 53, just six verses, we need to read that. The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable iniquity. There is none who does good. God looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek God. Everyone, every one of them has turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is none who does good. No, not one. Have the workers of iniquity no knowledge who eat up my people as they eat bread? and do not call upon God. So you see, the same thing that adversaries rise in this season. This agrees with what you see in the fourth chapters because this is a fourth season day. So adversaries arise. So this, this wicked rise up and they have a belief in their heart that there is no God. There may even be people who read Bible and go to church, but something is just telling them, forget there is no hell anywhere. Your hell is on earth. There's no heaven anywhere. Heaven is on earth. If you are if you are suffering, you are in hell. If you are enjoying, you are in heaven. There is no God anywhere. It's a human being that is your God. You know, so you have people who have this kind of beliefs, and you know, they just believe that you can go do anything. They say just all these things they are saying it doesn't exist. So it encourages them to do evil, encourages them to you know do wickedness. But this is a day to pray and say, Oh God, let these fools show them that they are fools. Show them that there is God. That's the kind of prayer you pray on a day like this. Lord, show the wicked that they are fools and show them that they, you are God and that you are alive and you are well. So the psalmist continues in verse 5. He said, There they are in great fear where no fear was. They said there is no God. Now they are afraid where there is no fear, where they should not be afraid. For God has scattered the bones of him who encamps against you, who have put them, you know, you have put them to shame because God has despised them. Oh, that the salvation of Israel will come out of Zion when he brings back the captivity of his people. Let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. May God scatter and put to shame those who encamp against you in the name of Jesus. We see the same thing. Isaiah chapter 53, you know, also tells us something. Isaiah chapter 53, you know, speaks about the persecution of the innocent. Shows that this is a time of pain, you know. And the wicked are encouraged to just oppress the wicked and they don't even know the wisdom of God because... They are foolish in their mind and they do not know that what they are doing, God will take advantage of it. So that's why the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 53, verse, you know, from verse 7 to 9, it says, He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who will declare his generation? For he was Cut off from the land of the living for the transgression of my people. He was stricken and they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. So why was he suffering? It's just wickedness. 
But because these are fools, God took advantage of this. That's how God would take advantage of whatever the wicked will do against you this day. Whatever the deep wicked will imagine, God will show them you are a fool. You are a fool. You know nothing. You don't know anything. You know, say in verse 4 to see, he says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. The wicked thought they were just laying stripes on him and hitting him and attacking him, and they did not know that their wickedness was accomplishing the purpose of God. That is how foolish the wicked will behave today in the name of Jesus Christ. While they are thinking they are hurting you, they do not know that they are advancing the will of God. Joseph's brothers thought that they were going to destroy his dream. We will sell him off to Egypt. Let's see what is going to happen. And there, in selling him to Egypt, they had no understanding that they were advancing the purpose of God. Every step the enemy will take today against your life will end up fulfilling God's purpose for your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, nothing will work against you today because God is watching over your life. God has luminaries to guide you in this day. You will not be a victim in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Then in Isaiah chapter, same Isaiah chapter 53, verse 10 to 12, he said, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. Amen. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. Nothing will work against you this day. By his knowledge, by his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many. For he shall bear iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him in portion with the great. And he shall divide his spoil with the strong. Because he poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bore the sin of many. And made intercession for the transgressors. The wicked wanted to hurt him. They ended up advancing the purpose of God for his life. Joseph said to his brothers, it was not you that brought me here, it was God. You did what you wanted to do. You thought evil against me, but my God turned it to good. That's what this kind of day is for. This 53rd day, whatever evil is taught against you will work for your good. You cannot fail. You cannot, your enemy will not prosper or prevail against you. So... So this is a day to pray as a Lord. <laughs> Let the wickedness of the wicked turn to my advantage. Let the wickedness of the wicked turn to my advantage in the mighty name of Jesus. Then there is yet one more pattern. We go to the 53rd book of the Bible, which is 2 Thessalonians. In 2 Thessalonians, you have another one. The Bible talks about the lawless man, the man of sin who comes out. He says, but whom the Lord will crush. Whom the Lord will crush. Let's see what the 53rd book of the Bible says. In um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the, man, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God, in the temple of God, showing himself that he's God. Do you remember Psalm 53? The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. So who is God? Say, I'm, I'm the God. Say, do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is at work. Only he who restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed. This is a day of people just do lawlessness, lawless things. People are lawless on a day like this. The lawless one whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the walking of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of truth that they might be saved. 
And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie and that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth. <laughs> you go back to uh, uh, verse 6. It says, since it's a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you. May God repay with tribulation those who trouble you unjustly today in the name of Jesus. And to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of God and from the glory of his power. Mm. So, you know, in this passage, in this book, Paul talks about how the people endure persecution, endure tribulations. In verse 4, you see that for your patience and faith in all, you, all, all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. This book says, finally, in chapter 3, verse 1, it said, finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of God may run swiftly and be glorified just as with you. I pray for you today that the word of God will run swiftly in your life and be glorified. That the word of God will be glorified in your life. He says again, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have no faith. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that this day the Lord will deliver you from wicked and unreasonable men. May the Lord deliver you from unreasonable and wicked women also. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, may the Lord give you of peace. Give, may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way. This day, may the Lord of peace himself give you peace. Hallelujah. So, this is a day I go through it again to say, Lord, show the wicked that they are fools. Let their efforts advance your purpose in my life. Oh Lord, show the wicked that you are God. They say there is no God, but show them that you are God and that you are alive and well in my life, in my situation. Oh Lord, deliver your people, deliver me, deliver your people from unreasonable men and from wicked men. Frustrate their efforts. Whatever they try to do, frustrate it. And, oh Lord, judge the wicked. Trouble those who trouble your people. Trouble those who rise up against your people. Those who encamp against your people. Today, trouble them in the mighty name of Jesus. I bless you in the name of the Lord. I speak blessings over your life. That as you go through this 53rd day, you will see peace. The Lord will frustrate your enemies. The Lord will use what the wicked imagine to advance you. Your nothing is permitted to work against you today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Have a great day. In Jesus' name.